All right, it's Layla. And we've decided we have to walk to freedom, right? Instead of giving freedom first. Plus, she's already pooped. So she didn't poop earlier, so I thought I was going to have to change it. Good girl. And yesterday, in group, she was taking food. So let's see if she's taking food today. No? All right. <laughs> Maybe in a second. Um, let's see. What are we going to talk about? Calm, consistent leadership. Right? So, these little kooky dogs... They're a little bit a uh, little bit wacko. You want to get a, I think you want to get a pretty good routine. I kind of, yeah, he did a good girl. I kind of mess with it at first with them to see what will work, and then I try to pick and then stick with it, right? Then once we get a good routine going, then we'll switch it up to make it different. See how they react to that. That's like a super minor stressor, right? Because they're pattern learners. You create a pattern. They're like, okay, I got this. And then you change it a little. And they go, wait, what the hell? Good girl. Break. Right? So, like, like even on there, like earlier, just getting her, you know, days ago, just getting her to go on this little cot, start settling down. It was kind of a struggle, right? Here, I don't care yet. Let her sniff. I didn't give her very much sniff time on the way out. Good. You take a hot dogs now? No. Nope. Right? So, and then we start we start applying pressure, right? As in the change, like things changing. That's adding pressure to them. Because because they're kind of kooky. She was taking food yesterday in groups. So I thought I was going to be able to start doing food work. So I was going to talk about being patient with what you're doing, right? Because a lot of times people say, hey, we tried everything. And the problem is they don't give time for something to work, right? which is kind of what I do at the start because I'm trying to find through the different ways of working with these guys what will work for the dog, right? Um, and, then, and then leaning back on other dogs with similar issues, right? But just because they have similar issues doesn't mean they're going to react to the same thing the same, to different things the same. All right, good girl. Let's see if she'll take the regular food. No? Let's see. Uh oh. <laughs> Here. Hey. Right? So, even this is kind of weird outside, right? So, inside on the regular dog bed, I just pat on it like two or three times and she goes right down onto it. Come here. Come here. Maybe it's me standing over her, right? Huh? Oh, it's being a little weird. Okay, just lay down. Here. Sit down. Remember from inside? This, I'm not applying pressure. It's just so she can't move her body. Right? So the only thing that's going on right now is birds chirping. Hey. Come on. Right? So this, if you notice or can tell, my hand hasn't moved, or at least I try not to make it move. I don't want to apply more pressure. Although, right, so there's a little yawn. Her tail's a little under. And there's nothing going on. Good. So she settles down, right, and looks at me. Okay, let's go. She was a little jumpy when we got up. So I thought I was maybe going to be able to start doing some at least luring exercises, right, like this. Right? But no. Right. So, so she might be one. I need to try the observation again, right? Like I did with uh, Harley, which also didn't work. 
but it might work for her. So I'll probably try bringing her out with Waylon, just her and Waylon tomorrow. Man, my poor Waylon. Need some alone time. All right, ready, sit. Good. Okay. Right, and I'm gonna keep saying this because that's what I do. I don't remember how long she was in Colorado, but the whole time she was there, um, our lady said that she wouldn't take treats. Did she not take treats or she just wouldn't work for treats? I think, I think she said when she got her to do sits, she wouldn't take treats, but she was taking treats from her. I don't know. I forget this kind of details. <laughs> Part of the I gotta see everything myself, right? All right, so we have a plane overhead. Come on, girl. Let's just get her on here. Let her sit down, chill out. All right. So uh, one of her kind of weird quirks, I guess, that I've noticed has been stuff overhead. Right. When we try to go under those trees, they're just trees and they're not moving. Right. Cause that's where I keep the water. So she's all like, oh, what the hell's going on? Right. And then, um, the first time I had her in the living room, <clears throat> when there was, uh, shadows from outside, cause it's not over there. Cause my apartment faces that way, in the back, back door. So when the sun's over there, it comes in and, and there's shadows of the leaves. Right. She's like, Oh, and, and does a lot of pacing and starting a circle. So I just have her on a little thin house line. Um, let me see if she wants a little sniff break while I'm bullshitting. Okay. Good girl. Uh, and then last night we were walking and then there was, it wasn't like a hard gust of wind, but it was, it was harder than normal. And the, just the leaves rustling up there made her kind of go. So whenever that happens, I just kind of stop and let them figure out that nothing bad is going on. Uh, right. And ideally you stop and they have their freak out and then they look at you and you go, good. So that way they look at, start looking at you when that happens, right? Instead of freaking out. At least I guess that's the theory of it. Nice sharp turn. Good girl. Right. Something about going this way. She's always done this. Let's see if we got little boops. All right. You see them little boops? Sometimes corrections help them. All right. And I've seen people say that, that the prong collar could actually be really good for them in those moments because it's, it's more natural to a dog. I don't know. That's what people that use them on every dog say. E-collars, uh, the e-collar advocates, they say it's the best thing because it's very neutral, right? So the e -collar, I would worry about with a dog like this, it's already kind of suspicious of things. That's where I would worry about with her. With other dogs, I would say it's probably great, right? Come on, girl. Got cars over there. What's she looking at? Let's see what you're looking at. There ain't nothing over there no more. I don't know. It's just information. I've never used them, either one of those tools in that regard. For me, the, the tools, whoever's dog this is, I would give information. They would say, yeah, I don't want to, or I do want to. One thing, good girl, one thing I would definitely say is this dog on a harness would be all over the place. Let's go give you a break. <clears throat> Up around the head, you're controlling their energy, right? So when they get start getting anxieties, they're like, oh my God, what's this, what's this? You can give them a little bit of pressure, like on the slip lead. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm here to take care of you. Nothing to freak out about, right? 
So that pressure helps slow the brain down, right? And helps them realize that they still got to pay attention to you. Then they pay attention to you and they see nothing's going to happen and you're taking care of them. Bam. More bonding, right? But you want to go do some recall stuff? Dang, I was hoping to get to work on this stuff. She's... She would be nice if I had a little commercial facility or like a garage. If I was in a townhouse, I had a garage. So all this stuff, it's kind of like, she's kind of like being a puppy, right? I mean, she is a puppy because she's only a year old. Uh, we got some nail gun stuff going off over there. Plank, plank. So anyway, she's still a puppy, but she's like a, a little bitty puppy where you got to change stuff all the time because they lose attention span until you build their attention span. Right, girl? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go see if you drink some water now. She's a water drinker. Oh, there you go. Dude. Well, you want to just go see if we can play? Oh, wrong button. 